Hi, it's Lee and welcome to Tesla Economist. It's sounding likely Tesla will have to make some drastic price cuts next year, not just to maintain demand, but also to increase demand due to wanting to grow during what could be a tough recession. The message is clear from Elon. He wants to continue to grow at any cost, even if it means making a minor loss. But I would guess that's as far as they would go, which would be so extreme anyway, that it would be quite a scary economy, worse than 2009. This would be highly extreme and I would hope the reserve banks don't push the economy to that scale. In this video, we're going to try and predict what price points Tesla may end up selling their vehicles from all their factories for each model. We'll do this by first attempting to assess how much the cost of goods sold per vehicle is for a Tesla for each model from each factory. Once we've established those figures, we can then see what the price of the vehicles would be at various margins. Once we have established those price points, we can then compare them with what the competition offer at the same prices. Not just for electric, but ICE cars too. Then we'll factor in all the other variables, such as the cost savings that a Tesla offers, along with the additional features that are standard in a Tesla. We'll use this as an indicator to see just how good a value Teslas are at such a price point, to give us some idea if they'll still have enough demand to meet supply. We'll experiment with different price points and see what margins they come out to and we'll see how they all end up in the financials for 2023 to give us some idea of what 2023 might be based on the level of the recession. We can then assign a forward PE ratio at today's stock price. We can then try and guess what the stock price might be at the end of 2023 once we have the earnings figure. However, it will be very hard to judge a PE ratio in a recession. It will also depend entirely on the extent of how bad the recession is. However, if Tesla are still producing some decent profits during such tumultuous times, it has to be a good look for the company in demonstrating how recession resistant the company is, even despite autos being a cyclical industry. Teslas are a deflationary product in many ways, and there comes a time when Tesla hits an intrinsic value of how much it can potentially save in cost, at least to a level of luxury and quality that people are looking for. I mean, there are still lower forms of transport, like cycling. A Tesla will never cost less than cycling places. So it will come down more to comparing what else is available at the same prices. And all other EV makers are struggling as it is. Legacy autos are losing money on their EVs, as are the new EV companies. Tesla has had huge margins, but this has been during a boom period and they became incredibly popular. If they now lower their prices during a recession, then they will ultimately become the lowest cost EV like for like. Actually, not even like for like. A Tesla should end up with longer range, higher performance and better equipped and now potentially at the lowest price point too. We will of course compare the equivalent in ICE along with the equivalent in running costs as well. Firstly, we need to estimate the cost of which Tesla can manufacture vehicles once we work out how much the cost of goods sold per vehicle is. We can work out what we're dealing with. We know that Tesla have these great margins, but we don't actually know just how great they are, unfortunately. There have always been too many moving parts. We know Tesla raised their prices significantly when they were already seeing high margins. However, due to the ramping of the new factories, we didn't get to see just how significant these really were. So we will look at all the numbers for the last two years and see what we can make of it. Then we will try and take some data points when we have a better idea of margins. I created a table to show Tesla's margins without regulatory credits over the last two years, along with the revenue per vehicle sold, to give an indicative idea of ASPs during each period. Now, during each of these stages, there is often noise with moving parts due to various events occurring that were affecting margins, mainly new production ramping. We can see that the average prices of the cars continued to lower through 2020. This was due to Tesla ramping up production in China with lower cost Teslas. On top of that, through the ramp ups, Tesla were losing margin. However, we see that in Q3 2021, when the Model Y was at a production rate of over 30,000 units a month, about double the previous quarter, that margins went from 20% from the, when the line started in 2020 Q4 all the way to 28.8%, with revenue per vehicle still under $50,000. This is a very reassuring number. As we know, Tesla was facing too much demand, so they started raising their prices, but due to the backlog, these prices didn't kick in until months later, despite alleged cost rises due to inflation that they were feeling at the end of the year. But even in Q4, with the revenue per vehicle still only at $51,700, Tesla were hitting 29.2% margin. This is without many price rises kicking in and supposedly also feeling inflation. It was a rare time in Tesla history, a snapshot of all factories running at a decent capacity over volume production and getting all cost benefits of economies of scale with no factories ramping 
Although, of course, Tesla still managed to ramp the China factories considerably since then. Q1 was another similar quarter, except some of the price rises had started to come in more. Now, with revenue per vehicle of just over $52,000, and now a margin of 30%, with 3% revenue per vehicle rise. If that full 3% rise all went into profit, then the margins should have actually been higher, with now revenue per vehicle at $54,400. However, Giga Berlin was also operational for nine days of that month, which would have cost a fortune with very low production levels and would have affected margins somewhat. There may have also been some inflation. However, we're still dealing with good margins. We also started to see the Model S finally start to ramp up from its line upgrade somewhat that quarter. In the following quarter, we have price rises all the way to $57,300. Now, although this seems like a high price rise, it was possibly even higher, but as the US dollar strengthened, it was not fully felt. Same for last quarter, the revenue per vehicle dropped to 54400 despite no price drops, implying it was the dollar. The dollar has weakened somewhat since though. The margins from the two most recent quarters are also completely out of proportion due to the massive new factories ramping. On top of that, we had line upgrades and lockdowns as well. So there's too much noise in those figures. We want to work out how much we think Tesla is able to make their vehicles for in Fremont and Shanghai. So we can take the quarters with the least noise and check what the prices of those vehicles were that were sold when they were ordered, not delivered. We can then apply that percentage of margin to see what we're dealing with. Once we have an estimate of the margin, we know how much Tesla can make these cars for. Of course, these were still being made through extreme times and were likely suffering from actual transitory inflation with all the supply chain issues that were still being faced. But there could be some actual inflation on top of these costs now. Although if we are preparing ourselves for a recession, then we'd equally see some deflation and these costs could actually come down. Therefore, the two most likely figures are around 29% in 2021 for Q3 and Q4. So we'll work out what Teslas were selling for then and use that as the margin to calculate a rough idea of the cost of goods sold per vehicle. After that, we'll see what price points Tesla will cost at various margins. We'll then compare those prices with what the competition offers, then analyze it factoring the cost savings of a Tesla along with the features that come standard in a Tesla to give us some comparison. Then we'll also need to consider the tax credit for the US. From there, we'll add these price points into some financial models to try and get an idea of what 2023 financials might be with these lowered prices. There's a lot to go through, so I don't want to just compact it into one video, but make sure we go through every step carefully along with all your feedback along the way. This is what's on my mind the most at the moment to work out the near future of Tesla so I imagine it's likely dawning on the most of you too. So not to be rushed. The good news is that I have a theory that people don't realize how much margin buffer Tesla currently have due to the new factories absorbing so much of it and hurt further with all the issues Tesla have faced with production downtime in Shanghai. Therefore, I'm hoping we'll be surprised by how large the percentage price drops may be if Tesla are running at just 20% margins. The other positive is that if Tesla are increasing production so much, then the operating expenses per vehicle also reduce. And we are already at a much higher run rate now than the average of this year, due to the last two quarters having various issues and skewing delivery numbers so much. But as usual, we'll let the numbers do the talking. But I'm hoping we can come up with a good idea of what Tesla's earnings will be next year, along with a forward PE ratio based on today's stock price and see what we can come up with there. The issue is that in a recession, it's really hard to judge what the PE ratio can be. Even if we work out the earnings for 2023, it will be hard to judge what PE ratio the market might give in such an environment. However, if Tesla are demonstrating that in such an environment, they're still able to produce some substantial profits, then investors might see this as a good sign as an evergreen company that can still be so profitable during recessions, along with seeing actual vehicle sales growth, whilst presumably the competition are doing the contrary. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.